Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jordan, if you're new here, and I asked you guys for Q&A questions on Instagram and over on the community tab a few weeks ago and have not managed to find the time to actually film that video. I also need to wash my hair. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do two birds with one stone here and I'm going to take you through my wash day, which a lot of you have requested in the comments anyway, so hopefully this gives you a sense of how I get my hair to look the way it usually does on camera, as well as answering your questions as I actually do my hair. So this will be a little bit of a chattier video for those of you who are interested in getting to know me and my hair, I guess, a little bit better. And as always, I'm also always looking for new video topics. So leave a comment down below if there's any videos that you'd like to see or if there are any questions that you have that I didn't cover in this video. Future Jordan here. This video ended up being chattier than I expected. Uh, so I've tried to keep it at a reasonable length here and have uploaded the full 30-ish minute Q&A video over on Nebula if you want to go check that out over there. This video is also kindly sponsored by Curiosity Stream, so if you do not already subscribe to NPL, you can sign up for the bundle for less than $15 a year using the link down below. So as you can see, my hair is kind of a mess. I normally try to wash it on a weekly to twice a week basis, depending on essentially what my schedule looks like that week and whether it's super dry outside, which it is right now. So this is essentially my product shelf. As you can see, I use primarily melanin hair care products. I've watched Natural Lady Vibes YouTube channel since I was a kid and her stuff works really well for me. All right, so before I get into the shower, I'll do one question, which is aside from essentially Google Scholar, what legal resources are there for someone without a .edu email address or a lot of money to read academic journals? And the legal part makes it a little bit harder because my default response would usually be Sci-Hub. If you don't know what Sci-Hub is, uh, Meta Life Crisis has a great video on it that I will put up in a card or link in the description. And outside of that, I would say check your local libraries. Um, a lot of the times libraries have journal subscriptions that you can use through their computers, but outside of that, Unless the article is open access, you can also email the authors of the paper and often people are totally happy to send you a copy of it. Uh, but those would be the two main ways that come to mind in terms of getting access to full papers without paying a ton of money or doing something illegal. Sorry. All right, we are back from the shower. I have all of my miscellaneous products down here. As a quick, I guess, overview of how I actually like wash, wash my hair. Um, I normally basically section it in half, shampoo the roots, and then put in conditioner once I rinse out the shampoo, and comb it out in the shower with a wide tooth comb, and then uh, twist it up into chunky twists, which you will see in a second. And so that takes around 25 minutes, and is usually not all that bad. Um, I'll also note that I know a lot of people complain about like having hair loss when you take antidepressants. I've been on antidepressants for a few months now. I have not noticed any hair loss issues, so that's your sample size of one saying that they didn't have that issue. So before I start twisting, let's do another question, again from YouTube. And this one's going to be about, can I do more ADHD content? Um, so since we're already talking about mental health related stuff, I'm definitely down to do more ADHD related content. I think that the challenge that I run into with it is that I, A, don't necessarily know what videos to make, um, and then B, want to make videos that are useful to you, but also are about things that I've kind of resolved myself. So I, I don't want to talk about something that I'm still working through with my psychiatrist or with my therapist or anything like that. If you have any thoughts on ADHD content you'd like to see, definitely leave your ideas in the comments. I would love to see them. But yeah, I'm down to do more. Uh, I just don't know what yet. Do you think that AI will be available to the general public for day-to-day -day tasks such as drawing, balancing bank accounts, and time management? I guess I would say yes and no. I think that for drawing I could definitely see it. For balancing bank accounts there's a lot of services that already offer that, so like Wealthfront is an example of one. Um, for time management I've seen less of that but I could definitely see that coming up. In fact there was actually something that I saw in time recently this morning that was offering something similar to that. So I could definitely see it coming up but I, I do feel like it will be similar to how we don't really call like Google search algorithms AI anymore, where 
it's not something that we really consider to be AI by the time it becomes like a mainstream thing in people's lives. So as you can see, chunky twists, and then from there I basically start in the back and move forward, taking each twist and turning it into two actual twists. Do I have any views on intellectual property as it relates to AI generated content? I think it's a really interesting time for that kind of stuff, and I think that at some point we're going to have to decide what the line is when it comes to something that was generated by an AI versus something that is owned by the essentially sources of the data that that AI was trained on versus the person who made the model. Like there are so many questions that come with that. So I think it's a really interesting time for that. I think that it's a really interesting time to be in tech policy. Um, but I wouldn't say that I have specific opinions on it because I feel like so much of it is very like case by case. I got a couple questions about essentially what my strategy is for staying up to date with literature in the field. I thought about making a whole video on this. If you want a full video on this, you can let me know in the comments. Essentially, my main sources are Twitter, Google Scholar alerts, and then journal like alerts from specific journals. Do I think that the field of machine learning is saturated? This ties into my last video on basically whether or not it's too late to get into AI as a career. I think that the field itself is not saturated, but that essentially a lot of the machine learning engineer type jobs that people think of when they think of working in machine learning are like much harder to get just because there's a lot more interest. Having said that, I think there are also a lot of other opportunities that we don't talk about as much to work in the field that make it so that if people want to get involved, you can definitely get involved. What plans do I have after graduation? Oh god. Um, so for people who don't know, I'm a fourth year. I am... I want it to be done in five years. With COVID, I'm expecting to be done in six because, as I've mentioned in the past, half of my work is animal work and because of COVID, a lot of that was delayed because there were things that I needed to be trained on and you couldn't be in the same room as someone and so I'm just getting started on training now and it's a whole mess. So I'm thinking it's going to be six, but still kind of pushing for the fastest timeline possible. Um, I'm planning on not going into academia and that's about as much as I figured out. So somebody I think asked me this on Instagram recently and my response was basically that I would like for someone to essentially pay me to like tinker with things and work on projects that interest me with like no guarantee of any tangible product coming out of it and basically give me autonomy over my work and also still do public engagement. So basically I want to be like Simone Yates. That would be super cool. And outside of that I haven't figured out, you know, I don't know what job that is, what specific job that is, or if that's just a job that I'm going to have to make, which I don't know, that could be cool. How much harder is grad school than undergrad and how did I know that going to grad school is right for me? So this is another thing that I've been thinking about doing a full video on. Uh, I was in undergrad originally planning on going straight into pharma, entry level pharma, and ended up essentially interning at a company um, that completely changed my mind about doing that. In terms of how much harder it is, I guess I would say it's it's hard in a different way because in undergrad, 99% of what you do, like, you know what target you need to hit. So you know what you need to do in order to get an A, B, C, whatever. Um, and in research, you don't know that necessarily. And in graduate research in particular, you know, your PI is involved, your advisor, but after a certain point, it kind of comes down to you to figure out, to decide, like, which thing you're going to do and which path you're going to take because you become essentially the expert on your own project. What's my opinion on Linux versus Mac for machine learning? I'm a Mac person. At some point I'll make a video that's basically why I use Apple for machine learning, but like the short answer is just that my whole life is built around the Apple ecosystem at this point, and so it makes sense for me to use Macs over like Linux computers. I got a bunch of questions about whether or not I was going to review the new M1 Max chips and the M1 Pro. I did a video on that, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, I will link it in the cards and link it in the description. How is the new space race influencing data science and machine learning? Actually, this is something that I've been kind of wanting to do a video on, specifically uh, the autonomous rockets that SpaceX has been making. Uh, so if anyone has a connection at SpaceX, hit me up. Oh, okay, this question is definitely going in the Nebula Plus version. 
All right, so as I mentioned, this Q&A video ended up being very chatty and it was getting kind of long. So if you'd like to check out the full half hour long version, you should head on over to Nebula for the Nebula Plus version. If you haven't heard, Nebula is a streaming platform built by me and some of my friends, including Tierzu, Simon Clark, and Marquez Brown. On Nebula, you can find ad-free versions of all of our videos, plus bonus content on our Nebula Plus videos for those times when our 10 minute video accidentally ends up being 30 minutes long. You'd also get access to our Nebula Originals, which you can't find anywhere else, including a very good trivia show where I competed against Brian from Real Engineering and Dave from City Beautiful in a bunch of fun and bizarre challenges, including trying to build an Ikea chair while solving math problems. And the best way to sign up for Nebula is actually through CuriosityStream, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction videos. In fact, if you're interested in getting some behind the scenes content from one of my other YouTube friends, you should check out their documentary Behind the Spotlight, which tells the story of how Mr. Beast became, well, Mr. Beast. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code Jordan, you can get access to CuriosityStream for 26% off their annual plans, with Nebula included for free for as long as you are a CuriosityStream member. And that's less than $15 a year. Signing up for CuriosityStream is a great way to directly support my channel while getting to watch my videos ad-free, so sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula at curiositystream.com Jordan or using the promo code Jordan.